I come from a working class family. My family originated from Fulham in West London. My mother's family lived in a small, tight-knit working class community in Dieppe Street, which was near West Kensington Station. And part of that family was, was um, my Aunt Esther, who was a black Londoner, born in Fulham before the First World War. She was born in 1912. Her father, Joseph Bruce, had come to Britain in the Edwardian era from what was then known as British Guiana. It's now known as Guyana. And he was an early black settler in Britain and came at a time when there were very few black people living in England. There were small working class black communities in seaports like Cardiff and Liverpool and Canning Town in the East End of London. There were some famous black people in Britain at the time, like the Edwardian composer Samuel Coleridge Taylor and the American boxing champion Jack Johnson. And there was also an American music hall singer, entertainer called Belle Davis. So my aunt was born into a Britain that had had very little contact with black people. And so growing up in this country in the 1920s and 1930s and 1940s, before the arrival of the Empire Windrush in 1948, was a very unique experience. Every Saturday, we went to the Granville fourpence for old pennies and a couple of hours entertainment and it was good you you went up in the gods but you d didn't mind that fourpence to see Nellie Wallace Hetty King Maxie Miller all the old ones it was really good her mother died sadly when she was about five years old. So her father raised her as a single parent in this tight knit working class community in, in London. He worked as a builder's labourer and in the 1930s also worked, as many working class black men did at that time, as a film extra. He was a spear carrier, what they called a spear carrier, in Paul Robeson's films, like Sanders of the River and King Solomon's Mines. And he would earn up to a guinea a day. A guinea was, in those days, 21 shillings. Although some now may feel that those kind of roles were derogatory and offensive, it put food on the table. My aunt left school at the age of 14 to work in service, as many young girls did in those days. By then he'd remarried, he married Jenny, uh, who was a children's nurse from his country, Guyana. He, they married in 1928. And it was Jenny who first encouraged my aunt to become a seamstress. And that was the profession that my aunt had until she retired. And she retired when she was well into her, in her 70s and she did every all the sewing by hand she never she said she never used a sewing machine in 1935 she was employed as a, to be a seamstress for a dressmaker in um, Chelsea in Markham Square which is off King's Road and Aunt Esther worked in the basement the lady lived upstairs Miss Taylor her name was and they made dresses for ladies of the court at Buckingham Palace and various celebrities, including Elizabeth Welch. And Elizabeth Welch was a famous black American singer and film actress, radio star. So Aunt Esther knew of her, and they made dresses for her. They didn't design them. They were designed by a designer in the West End, and then Miss Taylor would take the commission to have the dress made, and Aunt Esther would do the sewing. And occasionally, Miss Taylor encouraged Aunt Esther to take the dresses to Elizabeth Welch's house. And Elizabeth Welch, at that time, 
lived in a muse cottage off Sloane Street, which is not that far away from where my aunt worked. And that's how my aunt got to meet Elizabeth Welch, who she described as a very beautiful, um, glamorous, um, and very kind uh, person. And many, many years later, when I got to, to know Elizabeth Welch herself, and I, I showed her a photograph of Aunt Esther, she smiled, and she hadn't seen her since the war years, and this was in the 1980s. She said, oh, the friendly coloured lady with the Cockney accent, I remember her. And then when my aunt was 80 years of age in 1992, Elizabeth very kindly signed a photograph to her and sent it to her, which was a big thrill for my aunt.